Death for Sigmund and his brothers seems certain. But the king's wife is Sigmund's sister. And she begs for mercy and implores the king to chain them up instead. He agrees. Not for mercy, though, but because he plans an even more cruel. As the she wolf licks the sweet honey from Sigmund's face, he bites the wolf's tongue. The she-wolf pulls away, but Sigmund holds on. The chains break, and he's free. After his escape, Sigmund lives like us, hidden in the forest. His enemy... Even the great Sigmund needs help. So she sends her sons to her. Their blood is weak and corrupted. king in the north forced the dwarves to make a sword that would never fail and never rust and that would slice through iron and stone and bring victory to its bearer. But the angry dwarves cursed it. It would be the death of a man every time it was drawn and it would be the death of the king. Let me tell you about the sword Tyrving. I don't recognize this place. Where are we? Where is she? It feels wrong. Where are we now? Burial Mound. So strange that we go to such lengths to bury death. Something so very ordinary. Inevitable. It's as if we conspire to hide death because we have no answer for it. But when it comes and it forces itself onto our friends or loved ones, then comes the reckoning.
Dillian, I'm here. I'm here for the trials. Like when we first met, remember? What's wrong? What happened? Can you hear me? Just wait there. I'll find you. You have to find him. This is your mission. Find him. You have to use everything you have and find him. Get him back. It was just there. How could you lose him? How could she lose him? How could she? Find him. You remind me of a story that the Northmen tell about a young woman warrior. Her name is Herver, the daughter of a berserker born after he was killed. She is a wild, willful child who teaches herself to fight with weapons. When she learns where her father is buried, her only desire is to reclaim the treasure buried with him, but above all, the sword, Tyrvin. disguises herself as a man to join a band of warriors, and soon becomes their leader. When they come to the island where her father is buried, her men do not want to go ashore. They say that evil haunts the island, and that it is a worse place by day than other places are by night. Fearless, she lands alone. There are many grave mounds, and all of them have ghostly flames burning over them. She comes to the grave mound of her father after passing through these ghostly fires as though they were mist. The flames I passed through were real enough. Down.
பார்ப்பாங்க I'm leaving. I've decided. I think it will be good for me. It's the darkness. It's speaking through you. No, Dad, it's me. I think I can beat it. In my own way. I can see the darkness in your eyes, child. I met a boy. Boy? The chief had some. No. He said he could help me. It's a trick. He said I could be normal. Normal? Yes. No boy is going to save you. No one can. When they see the rot growing no. inside you, no. they will turn their back on you. The gods can only fix you through my hand. You're going nowhere. No. You will not defy the gods. Come, child, take my hand. Come. Send one. You cannot escape the darkness. Your curse will make everyone suffer. You will have blood on your hands! It's done. You did it, but there's more. There's more. You're tired, but you have to keep going. There's still more. There's always more to do. It's not going to be easy. Can you do another one? It's too much. Have you got the energy? She hasn't got the energy. I want to tell you a story about a god of the Northmen called Baldur. The second son of Odin. He was beautiful, good and wise. He was fair of feature. He spoke fair words. He gave fair judgments. Light shone from him. Only good things were told of him. Yet he was the first of the gods to die. story about the death of Baldur. It begins with dark dreams. Night after night, Baldur dreams of his own death, and the gods fear for his life. So Baldur's mother makes everything in the world. Fire, water, iron, stone, earth, wood, beasts, birds, serpents, poison, sickness. 
to swear an oath not to harm her son. One by one, they each make their vow. Neither weapons nor wood will injure him. Baldur's loves you. Boasts. Calling Only you. Dillian. Dillian, wait. Dillian. Open the gate. She can't. Open the gate. It's locked. Try harder. She can't. The gate. She can't. <laughs> she can't. She will. of our own making. Dillian taught her to see further, to peek through the cracks and see the worlds of color stretching away from the gloom. And Senna explored new paths into the unknown. Not in this world. Not in this world. You can't. Dillian saved you. Dillian cared for her like no one else has. Dillian's the only reason she's still alive.
gods feast and rejoice and amuse themselves by throwing spears and stones at Baldur, striking at him with sword and axe. But he comes to no harm, whatever they do. The gods never cease to wonder at this great marvel. But Loki shapes himself into a woman and asks Baldur's mother, is it really true that all things promise to keep him safe? I did not ask the mistletoe, Baldur's mother confesses. I thought it was too young. You killed him with your love oh because he believed in you. goes to the gods as they throw things at Baldur. The blind god, Huth, was there. Loki asks him why he wasn't taking part. Huth says, Years had passed since she left her father. She trained hard alongside her friend, Dillian. She saw things no one else could. Patterns, shapes, movement. An intuition that made her an exceptional warrior. Friendship turned to love. But the shadow of darkness never let her go, and she was caught between two worlds. That of Zinbel and her past. And Dillian. Future. Two realities. What if these trials mean nothing? It's laughing at you. What if they take you no closer to Dillian? You're letting this get in the way. What if they are just to tire you out, to make you weak before the battle? Broken you You couldn't see the darkness within you. He cared in a way that nobody else did. Baldur. His body was to be burnt on his ship, 
but they could not manage to push it into the sea and sent for a giantess to do it. She comes riding a wolf and has vipers for her reins. She pushes Baldur's ship into the sea with such force that the ground shakes and the rollers burst into flames. When Baldur's wife sees his body carried onto the ship, her heart bursts with grief and she dies. She's put next to her husband and the pyre is lit, sending the dead to hell. But even so, the gods cannot accept his death. You see runes everywhere. Everywhere. But what if they're not real? What if they don't actually make sense? What if they're a trick? The gods were lying. If you think it makes sense, but really the gods are playing with you. It makes sense in your mind, but it doesn't make sense in the real world. The gods are the truth. But it doesn't mean anything. You can't read this language. You don't understand. Zinbel was right. You're wasting time. You're cursed. Slow! Quicker! Except for a giantess they find in a cave. Balder was never my friend, she says. Let hell keep what she has. What if they're all about wasting your time, just delaying? Just by minute, by minute. <laughs> what does she think she's doing? <laughs> They mean nothing. Being special. It's a waste of time. It could all be a waste of her time. That's what the gods are just playing. Delian! The gods are laughing at them. Messing with her. It wouldn't be it.
Dillian never much cared for the underworld, and looked dimly upon the druids, like her father, Zinbel. I guess he took after his father, a chieftain who believed nothing he couldn't see, and he happened to be blind. She felt safe in Dillian's arms, and to see the world through his eyes, and slowly, the darkness that had bound her so tightly began to unravel. You're going to fall, Kev. No, Wait. she's not. She's she not going to fall. She's strong. She's steady. She can do it. You can do it, Zimmer. No! 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 Where's he gone? It's your fault. He's disappeared. You've lost him to the sea. He's gone. You've lost him to the water. He's gone to the water. He's drowned. Zimmer. Your father cannot understand your darkness. He cannot see through your eyes. No one can. <laughs> My own father was born blind. Doesn't have the faintest idea of what the night looks like. <laughs> the word dark to him means as little as the word light. So someone is afraid of the dark. So we fix them by taking away their sight. You give up the beautiful world. You, and only you, can see just to be rid of your nightmares. <laughs> or is this the what price you pay? What if you're wrong? What if this has nothing to do with the sword? What if we're wrong? The sword will never be. Gift that makes you so special in life. <laughs> what if this? This is the end. Just it's just a trick. It's just a pointless test. You've been fooled before. You could be fooled again. You're being tested. We need to fool the world to protect you. It's just a game for you. You never know which way it's going to go. <laughs> because I <laughs> But it made it worse. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs>